the brood mother. She might not be Ark's fanciest boss, but she is definitely one of the toughest. And today we're going to have a look at how various teams do against her to see, once and for all, which is the best team for you to take with you when you want to fight the brood mother. We will be testing Therizinos, Rexes, Spinos, Reapers, Shadow Manes, Deinonychus, and Megatherium. Each species will have a boss army of 20 individual dinos split where possible into an even 10 males and 10 females. Each individual dino will have the same stat spread. They'll have 70 points into melee and 70 points into health. They'll then have 50 level ups and that will be split evenly with 25 into health and 25 into melee except in one instance which I will explain later. Then the ones who can have saddles will have a 100 armor saddle on. So it should be as fair as possible. We'll do three runs with each boss team and compare how long it takes them to kill the boss and what percentage of the total health of those 20 teams is lost. In terms of player input, we are going to whistle the dinos to attack the broodmother and that is it. We're not going to do any repositioning or tactical involvement, which could potentially skew the results of the test because all we are testing here is the competency of these individual teams. Before we get started with the teams that actually managed to defeat the Broodmother, an honourable mention must go out to the three tests that just failed. The first two were the Deinonychus. Uh, we tried them once with the even stat spread and once with all of their points pumped into health. And both times, unfortunately, they failed. They, they put out some incredible DPS, but their survival, even with all of their points put into health, their survival chances were just not good enough, and unfortunately, both times they failed. The other failure was the Spino, which was very upsetting, because I love Spinos. I wonder how much of an effect moving them into the water would have had, so they got the hydration buff. But unfortunately, none of the other teams got to be tactically positioned, so the Spinos didn't get it either, and they did, in fact, fail their test as well. So, let's move on to the teams that actually managed to defeat the Broodmother, and we'll go through them in what I consider to be their order of success, starting with the worst and moving on to the best. In last place, we have the Reapers, which was a bit of a surprise to me, considering their tankiness and overall power. However, I think a big reason why they failed so hard was the lack of a rider. Certain teams, when they have a rider on them, perform so much better than when they are riderless. And in this case, the riderless Reapers wasted a lot of time doing their spin attack and trying to fire their tail balls at the Broodmother, so unfortunately they did quite poorly, having the least health remaining out of any team that actually managed to beat the Broodmother at 1.5% of their total of the total army health left, which was just insane. And they also took the longest out of every team that did beat the Broodmother, taking 5 minutes and 5 seconds on average after 3 tests to finally beat the Broodmother. It was a close one, they did manage to win, so they are here rather than in the honourable mentions, but I would not take unridden Reapers into a boss fight like this. They just don't seem to be able to pull their weight compared to other creatures. Their armour resistance is good, but when they're not being ridden their DPS is poor, their AI isn't great, and because they're so big they tend to just get in each other's way. So. Unless you've got a few people to ride them, I'd steer clear of Reapers in my opinion. In second to last place, we have the insect killing Megatherium, who usually come very highly recommended for fighting the Broodmother due to the fact that they get that pretty substantial buff every time they kill an insect, including the spiders that she summons. However, while they did put out quite a lot of damage and managed to kill the boss in a very respectable average time of 3 minutes and 32 seconds, their survivability was much lower than other bigger, stronger teams that we tested, and they only survived with 25% of their health remaining, which sounds fine, but that's a lot greater chance of you losing teams that you spent time and effort breeding, mutating, and then leveling up. So they can get the job done, 
but there are safer options out there if you're going in with only yourself as the rider and you want AI controlled creatures to help you out. Shadow mains are an interesting one and were difficult to place in my order of recommendations because they had the most health remaining after the boss fight of any of the tames, including tames who could heal. They came out of the boss fight with 63% of the total army health remaining, which is just incredible. However, they took an age to actually kill the boss, taking 4 minutes and 34 seconds, which is almost double some of the other creatures. So it's really a trade-off between complete safety and speed of killing the boss. Now we are only talking about a few minutes here, so maybe not that big of a deal, but... <sighs> It depends what you want to value more. Do you value your survivability or do you value your ability to quickly kill the boss? Which can also translate into more survivability. Overall, I personally prefer things to die quicker when I'm fighting them, so I'm putting Shadow Mains below the Rexes and the Thenries, who put out more damage. However, if you're someone who values survivability over damage, then Shadow Mains are an excellent, excellent choice for fighting against the Broodmother and one would assume other bosses as their survivability is just incredible. In second place we have the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex. These guys are a pretty much a staple of boss fights across every arc, across every boss and it's easy to see why. They kind of clean the house with the Broodmother. They defeated her in an average time of 2 minutes and 46 seconds and did so with an average of 52% of their health remaining. Absolute monsters now and always. However, they're not in first place. In first place is the Therizinosaurus. Now, technically we ran 6 tests with the Therry, so 2 different brackets, 1 bracket of 3 had no cake and the other bracket of three had cake in its inventory and they did produce different results. The time to kill was pretty much the same for both of them with the Therizinosaurus with cake taking 2 minutes and 27 seconds and the Therizinosaurus without cake taking 2 minutes and 29 seconds. There should really be no difference between the two of them, and the damage output isn't affected by the cake at all, so that's just, you know, within a margin of acceptable error. However, in terms of how much health they had at the end of their three tests each, the Therizinosauruses with no cake survived with 38% of their total health, and the Therys with cake, who I will add had their cake taken off them the second the boss fight ended, so they didn't get a chance to heal anymore after the boss fight, they survived with 58% of their health remaining, meaning that they survived with almost the most health remaining out of everyone, you know, they were pretty close to the Shadow Mains, and also had essentially the quickest kill rate of any of the teams, putting them pretty comfortably in first place. So we took all of the data and we plotted it on this graph that you can see here where we compare time taken to beat the boss against percentage of health remaining and I think that pretty clearly shows that if you are playing single player for example or you're on a server and you're playing by yourself the Therizinosaurus is there with the lowest time to kill the boss and the second highest percent of health remaining as long as it has cake in its inventory making it my personal recommendation Although I don't think you could go wrong with the Rex or the Shadow Main. The Megatherium, I would be a bit wary of advising you using that if you're playing in the situation I've just described. Maybe if there's a couple of you playing together and you reach on a Megatherium you can make it work. But if most of your teams are going to be AI controlled, I'd be a little bit wary of the Megatherium. And I would steer completely clear of the Reaper. So thank you very much for watching. I love making Arc Science videos. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I look forward to seeing you next time and goodbye.